we have discussed five of the seven factors that impact climate. Next, we're going to focus just on wind. Wind impacts so many aspects of climate that we have several videos just on wind. However, we cannot forget about the climate factors we have already studied. You will see that they all relate to wind in many different ways. The essential questions the wind video lecture series will discuss are questions two through five. There's a lot of information, so please watch these and other resources as many times as you need to. You are the one responsible for understanding this information. Keep in mind, all these factors work together to create each individual climate. All right, let's talk about wind. Why does air move? Why are some days windier than others? Well, it all comes back to air pressure. Remember that high pressure means there are more air particles in one place, and low pressure means there are fewer air particles in another. The Earth wants to try and make the high and low pressure areas equal, so it's going to try its hardest to move air from one type of pressure to another. When it moves, we get wind. Quickly pause the video. What I'd like you guys to do is answer this question. What can cause the pressure of air to become high or low pressure? You already know the answer. This is just review. If you need to, go back to your lame cow notes. So pause the video. The answer to this question comes from the first part of our lame cow notes. If you remember, uneven heating of Earth's surface creates different, ty different types of pressures. Warm air usually creates low pressure, and cool air usually creates high pressure. Secondly, the higher in the atmosphere you get, the lower the pressure because the density of air decreases with elevation. Finally, the more water vapor in the air, the less pressure you have. Now remember, each of these variables have an inverse relationship with each other, which means as one increases, the other is going to decrease. For example, as elevation increases, your air pressure goes down. Now, we know what causes wind. How do we name the wind, though? You might be asking yourself, well, why do we care? Well, you'll, you'll see later on. This is really important. Think about any time you've watched or heard the news and a meteorologist says, we have a northerly wind. What is the meteorologist really saying? Well, we always name wind from the direction where it comes, not where it's going. So a northerly wind means the wind is coming from the north. All right, now we're getting somewhere. This slide has one of the most important pieces of information that you're going to need to know. Right now, we know what causes wind, we know how to name it, but what direction does wind always travel? And I'm not talking, you know, north, south, east, west. Remember, wind is just nature's way of evening out pressure differences. So, wind always, always travels from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So try to imagine this. Think of a high pressure area as a big hill. So here's my big hill. So this is my high pressure. And the reason why it's a big hill is because there's lots of air making up this hill. Whereas a low pressure is kind of like a deep valley. Okay, so this is my low pressure. And it's deep valley because there isn't as much air there. What wind is trying to do is it's trying to take all these air particles in the hill put them then into the valley to make everything kind of even. Now meteorologists have figured out a way to show air pressure on maps. They do this using special lines called isobars. Isobars are just lines on a weather map. And the thing to remember about isobar lines is that everywhere on the line has the exact same pressure. So for instance, this line right here of 1,028, every single spot on this line has a pressure of 1,028. Now usually these 
lines connect and make a bunch of circles on a map. You can see that right here. At the center of all the circles, you're either going to find a capital H or a capital L, you know, for high or low pressure. Before we get too far, I want you guys to hypothesize the direction air would travel in the map on the screen. So take some, take some time, try and figure it out. Now, if you think that the air is traveling from the high pressure to the low pressure in somewhat of a southeastward direction, you'd be right. Now, there's a question right here. Make sure you pause the video, answer the question, see if you can figure it out. The correct answer to this is the highest pressure on the map is 1,028 millibars, and the low pressure is 996 millibars. So far, we've discussed the cause of wind, how to name it, where it always travels, but we really haven't discussed what causes it to travel either fast or slow. To answer this question, we need to look at the isobars we just talked about. Now, if the isobars on a weather map are really close to each other, the wind speed is going to be really, really high. However, if isobar, bar, if isobar lines are really far away from each other, then the wind speed is going to be low. Let's go back to our hill example. So if we have really high pressure, the slope of my hill is going to be very steep. And if I have very low pressure, like really close to that, my valley is going to be really deep. So this is my low pressure. So you can kind of think of it like these air, pre or these air molecules. It's going to be really easy for them to slide down this hill, so they're going to go really fast from the high to the low. So these are going to be fast winds. Isobar lines are going to be really close to each other. However, if my hill is not so steep because the pressure is not that high, but it's still a little bit higher than my low. So here's my high pressure, and then let's say my low pressure is way over here, and it's not as deep, so this is my low pressure. Those air particles that make up the high pressure, it's going to take them a little while longer to travel from the high to the low because the steepness between the two is not so great. So this is going to be slower wind and the isobars are going to be really, really far away from each other. So again, pause the video. I want you guys to answer this question right here. Which pressure gradient would result in greater wind velocity? Is it from A to B or C to D? Pause the video, write your answer down in your notes. So from location A to B, the isobar lines are closer than from C to D, which means that the wind should be faster from A to B. Now you can really see this in the bottom right hand side of this high pressure system, right about here. Those isobar lines are very, very close compared to these guys way out here. So the wind speed is fastest here, slowest over here. Now scientists like to classify wind based on the area the wind impacts. Land and sea breezes really only affect small areas like mm, an ocean or uh, the beach by a lake. High and low pressure cells create wind on a somewhat larger scale and global wind patterns, well, they impact large sections of the earth. Now what I'm going to ask you guys to do is in your notes you have two big squares, kind of look like this. One's labeled uh, land breeze, one is labeled sea breeze. What I want you guys to do is draw in each box a little bit of land and then a little bit of water. And then the rest is up to you. I need you guys in each box to label where the high and the low pressure is, where the cold and the hot air is. Now if you guys remember, cold, hot relate to high and low pressure, so you should be able to figure that one out. I want you to draw an arrow showing wind direction. Remember, wind always travels from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. And then um, to indicate that it's daytime in one of the boxes, I want you to draw a sun. And then to indicate that it's nighttime in one of the boxes, I need you to draw a moon. You guys can figure this out. Just think about heating of water and land, what heats and cools faster or slower. So pause the video, draw it. And then let's do this. Now, land and sea breezes are a great place to start putting everything that we've learned so far together. 
Go, going back to the beginning, what causes wind? Remember, it's caused by pressure differences. Well, you've already told me that water and land heat at different rates. Because they heat at different rates, we should get a pressure difference. During the day, land heats much faster than water, creating a low pressure over the land. So there's my low pressure because it's warm. Water, on the other hand, is cool and therefore is my high pressure area. So wind always travels from where to where? Well, it always travels from high to low. So during the day, we have air moving from the water to the land, which is called a sea breeze. Now the opposite is true at nighttime. Land is now uh, my high pressure because it cools off faster, and water is my low pressure because it's retaining some of the heat that it got during the daytime. Wind always travels from high to low pressure, and we name wind based on where it comes from. In this case, it comes from the land, so this is my land breeze. That's it for this video. Make sure you watch it as many times as you need to. Make sure you watch other videos that I have on my Moodle page to help you if this is a little bit confusing.